On this episode of Bloom of a Classic, I'll show you how to replace a needle and seat in an SU card. Welcome back to Bloom of a Classic, and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content, and today's video is another video on the famous SU carburetor. The ones on my daily driver, 1975 XJ6, are running great, except that I notice sometimes if I'm sitting a long time at a red light or if I leave the ignition on a long time before I start the engine, the front card can start overflowing just slightly, slightly out the overflow tube. So you can get a slight smell of gas in the car and you'll see a drip or two over there. So uh, my guess is this probably has a bad needle and seat. I took it apart a while ago just to check that there was no dirt or debris in there. Because if you get some dirt or debris in here, you know, that will of course not seal. But when I had a look at the tip on the one in the car, I saw some marks or grooves in there. So it's just basically worn out. So I've ordered new ones here. There is a kit you can get with seals and these that will fit. It's a pretty universal kit that will fit many different SU cars because these are pretty much the same. It's just a different gasket that holds it all in place. I'll show you that in a little bit. If you're new to my channel and you haven't seen any of my other videos on SU carburetors, I've made many of them. Everything from a basic overview to how to tune them, various different ways of tuning them, um, just an overview of how they work, and also I've gone through a complete restoration of a set as well. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to the playlist up above and down below so you can check that out if you want to. So let's head on over to my 1975 Jaguar XJ6. We'll have a look at the carbs and I'll show you how easy it is to change these out. Here are the carbs we'll be working on. They're a pair of SU-HS8s and they have external float chambers, one here and one over here. So it's really, really simple to change out the needle and seat because everything can stay in place. You just have to loosen up these screws here, lift this up, we'll just connect this fuel line, take it over to the bench and have a look at. So that's really, really simple. However, if you have um, a set of SU carbs that don't have the external float chambers, such as the HIF, the later ones, you will most likely need to remove the carburetors just to get everything off, unless you can get good access underneath, because then the float chamber is basically built into the carb underneath. So then I recommend removing them. But in most applications where you have this kind of float chamber, the ones that are separate, then you can do most of it with the carbs in place and just remove the top plate here. Set up the camera now, we'll remove this plate and then we'll take it over to the workbench. Since I have these flexible rubber fuel lines here, let's get a fuel line clamp. Clamp it off just to minimize the amount of fuel I spill. Also another thing before I start, do this on a cold engine. This thing hasn't run for over 24 hours. I've also disconnected the battery before I start. So I will remove this plastic hose here, which is just for the overflow. So that's where I saw some fuel coming out. And then I will loosen up this hose clamp here. I can slide that fuel line off. So far I haven't spilled a drop, so that's good. Let's get a flat blade screwdriver and there are three screws around here. I always be really careful with any of the screws on SU carbs. I find them to be of a quite soft material, so it's really easy to, uh, to ruin them. So be really careful when you loosen them. Also, when you put anything back together on an SU carb, you don't need to tighten things down very tight at all. You will ruin the screws, you will strip out the threads. Uh, if you work on these long enough, you probably will have maybe found a stripped out one from a previous owner. So, don't over tighten anything. Just getting the last screw out here. There we go. And now I can carefully, carefully lift up. So you see here is the float, in here is the needle and seat, and there's a gasket. So we'll take this over to the workbench and have a look at it. So here's the whole assembly on the bench. So here's the gasket, the float, and then right here inside you have the needle and there's the seat. So the first step is to remove the float. It's just held in place with a pin has sort of a pinch on one end so it really only comes out 
one way. There we go. You can just set the float to the side. And here is a point where you can test, you know, if your float is leaking or not. You can see if there's any fluid in it. Listen to it. Seems to be no fluid or anything in here. Now there's some, it looks like something on there. I'm not really sure what that is, but I've also tested this thing before. Held it underwater for a bit and no bubbles or anything came out. So it seems to be tight and holding air. On other SU carbs, you can adjust the float level, and that's another way that they will overflow, of course, if the float level is incorrect. However, on these, you can't with these plastic floats. They're already set. So if you have the wrong float level on these, then you need to replace the float. But usually, you don't get the wrong float level on these carbs. If you have an overflow issue with the HS8s with these uh, floats, the issue is usually the needle and seat. So we'll open it up here. And I'm trying to get the camera to focus on that. Like it looks really good and really clean. But if you have a look at it, it sort of looks worn away. You see it, it tapers off really steeply. So we're going to compare that to a new one. So we'll keep that one in there just so we don't mess them up. Here's a kit I'll be using. It's uh, called uh, WZX1102 Needle and Seat Kit. So in this kit, it's for many different carbs. So here's, for instance, the gasket that fits mine, but this big one here is for the uh, HIF. And the other ones I'm not really sure about. So that's why this thing fits many different SU carbs. So even though I'll only be using those things, I will be, of course, keeping the rest of the gaskets in case I have someone, another car, or a friend with a car that has a leak, maybe, or something you need to gasket. It's good to keep them. Let's see, we'll keep them apart. Here is, let's see if we can see a difference. It is hard to tell, but you see that one is more tapered off than that one, so it does look worn. We will put that to the side, because you don't want to mess them up. You want to replace the needle and seat together. They're meant to go together. You do not want to just put a new needle in there using the old seat. So now we just need to loosen the seat here. There we go. And I think I actually found the culprit while this was leaking. It was probably something else. This looks like a small piece of the inside of a fuel line or something else. So that's what was getting in there while it was leaking or... All right, well, this is already have all the parts. We'll switch it out anyways, but you know, you never really know what you find until you take something apart. I'm just going to blow out all of this with some compressed air and make sure it's perfectly nice and clean inside. And I'll come back and we'll assemble this. Alright, I'm back and it's all cleaned out now. So that's the thing, you never really know what you will find whenever you take something apart. So that actually explains kind of why this was intermittent on my car. But anyways, it's a good thing to swap it out anyways. Because then I'll know that it's new. And it should be tight, so that's in place, nice and tight. We'll put that in like so, and then it's just a matter of putting the float back in, seeing which side of the pin go through the float. There we go. It's going to get through the last hole, like so. And just push that pin through. It's a little bit too far. Alright, now that pin is through as well. This thing pivots nicely. And you can do sort of the blow test where you Seems to be holding air nice and tight. So we will use a new gasket. That's the one that fits. And I'll just go and put this back on the car. We're back at the car and the one thing I did off camera is I used a just a vacuum fluid extractor. I sucked out the remaining gasoline in here. 
just to make sure there was not a lot of debris in the bottom. It was very clean in the bottom. I just used a little bit of carb cleaner and a rag just to dry it up and it looks nice and clean because if you have dirt and debris in here that will possibly swirl around, get up and start eating away at the mating surface in your, between your needle and the seat and then you will have a leak sooner or later again. However, I don't think that was the case here. I think that piece of fuel line was the issue here, which i uh, not really exactly sure where that came from, but it's a good idea to change these things out anyways. So it's just a matter of lining everything up the right way, putting the screws back in. I had the new gasket. I also dried off the mating surfaces just to make sure that they're really clean. And remember not to tighten this too tight. The gasket does a really good job of sealing here. It doesn't have to be very tight at all. Just tight enough so they won't come loose again, but make sure that you'll be able to get them off easily. When you need to get in here next time. All right, let's hook up that fuel line again. It's all tight and in place. Now we can remove the clamp here. And the last thing is just to put on the breather slash overflow. There we go. Now that's all set. Of course, I will have to do the same thing to the other side, even though I've never had any overflowing issues from that side. It's good to replace both, of course, at the same time. And that's it for this episode. As you saw, it's really, really easy to change out. You just need to take some things apart, put it on the bench, or you can even probably do it on the car if you don't want to disconnect the fuel line. I just removed it from the car to make it easier to look at. So um, maybe you've had overflowing issues with your carbs, maybe you've been out driving and you hit the back of a screwdriver a bit, which can usually you know dislodge any dirt and needle and it might um, it might seal up for a little while, but if that's happened to you, then just order the parts, they're very, very cheap and you can change them out. Like I mentioned, on these cars with these floats, you can't adjust the float height, but on many other SU carburetors, you need to have the correct float height adjusted just for good running, for it not to overflow, if you don't have too little fuel, it needs to be adjusted. So if you maybe want to see that in a future video on a different set of carbs, let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see that. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, it really does help out a lot. And one last thing, I did find that little piece of rubber or something in there, I'm not really sure where that came from. All the fuel lines on this car are pretty much brand new, so uh, maybe that's um, I don't know a piece of fuel line I wasn't careful when I cut the lines, or maybe it's something from a previous owner, or maybe it's just something that was in the tank that made its way all the way up there. I'm not really sure, but I got it out of there, and next time I go for a test drive, I will just be extra careful and have a look, make sure that there are no leaks or anything. So, anyways, until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Little Muffet Classic. I'll see you soon.